Perrin, do you mind if I start with you? Oh, sure. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Perrin. Um, How you doing? Good, good, good. Um, so the lock lines okay. is pretty much two friends, two guys. Um, they trying to start their own background agency um, for the wrong reason, of course. One is just the um, he's he's a hustler. Uh -huh. He just want to make money, and the other one he's just a womanizer. So mm -hmm. he just want to sleep with girls on set. So pretty much, and um, the idea comes from. Um, me and my friends, uh, you know, we do a lot of background gigs, so it's pretty hilarious to see, you know, the stuff that they do. So, cool. Cool. Let's go to um. Let's go to you, Megan. You and your sister. Okay. Um. Ours is about a town of like small porcelain figures trying to break out of the mold of small town life. So, and it'll be a stop motion animation. Cool. Awesome, Marco. Hi, Marco. Welcome. Hi, how's it going? Um, so mine is about a college student who is in a committed relationship and his girlfriend uh, disappears off the face of the earth. So he starts to um, try and track her down through Facebook stalking and develops a reputation of kind of being pretty good and starts his own PI uh, I guess his, he becomes a PI in kind of Facebook stalking or social networking stalking to try and find uh, solve cases for other hapless, hopeless individuals like himself. Nice. Hi, Matt. How are hey. you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Very good. Uh, so I'm working on a, a docu reality web TV series where I'm helping people who have overcome um, some tragedy or loss um, and I'm helping them overcome it by uh, training them for a road race and while they're doing it they're raising money for charity. Awesome. Great. And let's go to you next, Tip. <laughs> I don't know if it says my name. This lower it does, I see it. It's supposed to be backwards, like it looking inside a mirror. So um, the rest of us will see it the right way, but you will see it backwards. Okay. Oh, so mine's just backwards. Okay, so mine, um, me and my partner Lauren have a web series, Craft Ladies, and basically we want to take it to the next step where we write um, not necessarily a second season of it, but more develop the characters into a pilot. Um, obviously to pitch, so. Cool. Cool. So, um, how, where are you? Where are you guys all in your week one? Uh, I'm sorry. Let me go to Drea. Drea, um, I don't know if you're able, able to type yet. If not, go ahead and send me an email. Um, oh, there we go. Can Can you, if you want to give me a quick um, log line about your work, I can read it out to Mark. Sorry, Mark. Drea's having problems with her uh, internal mic. So I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna speak on her behalf when she types for me. But while she does that, um, how is everyone's first week going? So Mark, we're doing uh, your first. This is week one of ten. These guys are going to be developing a web series in the ten weeks. Awesome. Yeah. So th we uh, they've all established their idea. Now it's just a matter of them developing it and then raising some money and then going out there and making it. Great. It's exciting. How's everyone doing their first week? Um, tomorrow will be the end of your first week, so how is everybody doing so far? Are there any challenges that you're facing yet that Mark could be of help to you with? Uh, for me, it's mainly time management and trying to get, trying to find the time to do everything that we need to do. I mean, I think I might be stretching myself a little too thin, but, um, you know, I uh, started watching, I watched the uh, first uh, chapters on the, for this first week, and I realized you do require a lot of uh, time commitment, so I figured maybe I underestimated what, how much time I was going to give for this course, so I'm going to have to readjust it for the second week to first catch up on the first week and also kind of, um, Go forward. I'm gonna meet myself again. Um, I guess one of the problems we've had is trying to establish a um, who our audience will be. 
Um, cause Hummels are kind of like, well, like a lot of older people own them as collectibles. Uh -huh. So we don't know if, um, we should skew, like, is it something that's more retro that we can skew younger or, um, cause I wouldn't want to like completely like alienate the original demographic, but I do think that it might be kind of younger stop motion, more relevant to the like people pursuing their dreams, kind of like of the millennial, you know, people finding their own passion kind of storyline, mm -hmm. which may not really relate to the original audience that it initially looks like. So I guess that's kind of something we're trying to work out to balance between drawing in the older demographic that people that originally collected Hummels, but appealing to a younger audience, so. And is the subject itself um, geared more towards a younger audience? Yeah, I think so, because, like, based on the, um, I mean, we're limited by the figurines we own, so a lot of them are more, like, like, we have a sample, it's a, a fiddler. <laughs> so, uh -huh. like, we have, like, a lot of, you know, people that play flutes, like a photographer, you know, there are a, lot, a lot of them are children, you know, they appear to be like young boys and young girls, so we thought it'd be more sh um, kind of like people pursuing their own dreams or like wanting to leave their small town and being like, well, I want to be in a band and all that kind of stuff, so I figure that was more in line with what younger people are trying to do, whereas older people may already have either pursued their dreams or are focusing on different aspects of their life. But these were figurines, correct? I mean, we got these from our grandmother, so. Right. Um, yeah, it's, you know, my stepmom has probably 300. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my, my stepmom is on Facebook 24-7. She actually may be checking this out right now. Yeah. So, you know, I think there's a, a great possibility to kind of split it so that you, you know, you can still go towards the younger stop animation kind of thing. But I, I would definitely wouldn't leave out you know, the, the millennials that are, you know, that collect them, mm -hmm. that are on all the websites, yeah. you know, that are, you know, buying them, trading them. I mean, it could be a cool little thing on Facebook where you could, you know, um, potentially have somebody, you know, send, you know, donate or send in, you know, uh, one of the, you know, one of their, one of their, um, almost to, to have you do a storyline just on them, you know what I mean? I mean? Obviously, they're very, you know, they're uh, uh, delicate and everything, but, you know, it could be an interesting play okay. to include the audience of, you know, you know, even if it's, if it's uh, you know, a donation of some sort, like, you know, we're, you know, as we're raising money, we're, we need some more Hummels and people, I mean, my stepmom would probably send you three of them if she found out that you were doing this. She was like, oh, <laughs> let me get her this one, because like, I can get you another one. I got so many, you know what yeah. I mean? Because it would be something really cool that everybody can get involved in. Yeah, that's true. That's a good idea. So definitely I would have, you know, a Facebook page, you know, as you're gearing up for it, you know, and, um, you know, and, and any of the any of the kind of blogs or um, sites that are, you know, that have antiques and things like that or, you know, that are selling, you know, kind of um, precious things would be a cool place to kind of reach out to them and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what we're doing. You know, come check it out. Okay. That's a good idea. I'll make sure my mom, my set mom finds out about it. Okay. <laughs> how about you, Matt? Did you, you and I have been going back and forth a little about your, the structure of how you want to do everything? Yeah, so I think my main steps is, first, I need, a, I need to find a, a producer partner, a producing partner, because um, I've been working on this solo for so long, and it's time to uh, have someone else to be accountable to and start getting the steps rolling. The other thing I want to do is, because of this reality, and I want to... Um, I want to cast through social media to hear people's stories of what they're going through and why they've chosen to do uh, a 5k or a marathon for charity. Um, I wanted to know, and I think Mike touched on it and he'll touch on it in a later distribution course. Um, but I wanted to know, like, is there a way to start building up your presence through social media now before the show even launches? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I would definitely, I mean, you can, you, you know, on Twitter, you know, especially you can, you know, search, you know, a hashtag or a word, you know, 5K run, you know, a marathon, um, 
uh, I know there's a uh, I just there somebody had a little Kickstarter or you know kind of a, a GoFundMe kind of thing for um, a recovery house. They were doing um, a 10k. They're raising money for uh, a sober living house, and so it was like kind of all through Facebook and stuff. But I think it would be a great opportunity to to reach out to you know to build out a presence on Twitter and Facebook, you know, and um, and letting people know what you're doing and that you're interested in hearing stories. Um, uh, there's also uh, a friend of mine has a podcast. Uh, he's a, an ultra uh, ultra man where he does like <laughs> it's like a marathon one day and then 500 mile bike ride and kind of thing. But yeah. he is always having people on his um, on his blog. So that would be you know comp- potentially something interesting for him. His name's Rich Roll, R I C H R O L L. Okay. And you can uh, check out his blog and search, search search him on Google. You'll find him. And uh, but you know maybe you could reach out to him and tell him what you're doing. And uh, you know you're you know maybe you could he could have you on as a guest and you could talk about the project and what you're doing. And he's got you know thousands of, of listeners and it could be a, a starting point. You know. That's great. And then how do you how do you recommend like what should go on a on a Facebook page? Um, like should should I not launch until I have a logo for the show, or is that less important? It's just about getting out there and starting to build um, followers. There's no there's no hard and you know strong way to do it. I mean, I always want to be com- I want to be as prepared as possible. You know, and I want you know kind of a first impression of people. You know, when they see something I'm doing, to go, oh wow, I, I want to check that out. I will hint at things, you know, on my Facebook or Twitter, or this is what I'm doing, but I really try to hold off until I have, you know, something. And it doesn't have to be an amazing. It could just be, you know, an image, mm-hmm. you know, of somebody running a 12K, hitting the finish line or something, or, you know, whatever it is, some images like that that you can just start. And then as you develop it and, you know, work on graphics and some kind of artwork and stuff, you can then update it and everything. I wouldn't get too precious with it and say, I can't do it because it's not perfect. It's not, you know, exactly what I want. But you know the best foot forward that you can at this time. Right. You know. And do you do you as Mark have a separate Facebook page from Bannon Way? I do. I have my own, and then I also have uh, a fan page that was created when I was doing the Bannon Way. And uh, for me, for me personally, I like just my Facebook page. You know that I can interact with people. Other people are mo- you know kind of moved off of the personal page and into a fan page, and they mm-hmm. update the fan page. Right now, since all my friends are on you know, friends and, and acquaintances and other, you know, other people that, you know, um, like my work and support me are all on that. I haven't made like a mass transition over to, you know, a fan page basically. But, you know, it, it's, it would be good to have like two separate things that you can be kind of focusing on and be pointing to one of your pages. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Tiffany? Yes. <laughs> So uh, we were talking about um, you guys doing more promotional stuff for your series. Yeah. Or launching into um, season two. Um, yeah. I mean, right now we're um, we had the whole first season. We just finished up literally this week, um, and we're just uh, we have some promo stuff coming up in April. Um, that's a little bit different. It's shorter. It's like under five minutes, whereas the show was ten minutes. When you say just finished up, what does that mean? Um, we did a season one of the Craft Ladies, um, and the there's eight episodes. And so you've released one, you've released all eight. Is what you're saying? That's when you finish up, as you've released it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not like post production, but right, just right. like everything. It's all up. Um, so now we're kind of in like a weird space of what do we do next. Um, so we were kind of trying to, like, because we need to get a bigger audience and are also, the main goal of us starting the web series, which I'm sure that you wanted with Bannon Way and and succeeded at, is to get it, you know, to the next level, to the next thing, not necessarily just doing many seasons of it. So I think what we're struggling with right now is the next like, do we do a season two, or and do we mix it up, or do we do a pilot, or um, which is kind of what I think we're going for, um, and how do we make these characters in that half-hour setting 
um, like something that you would tune into every week rather than like a gimmicky thing. You know what I mean? Um, so, <laughs> so, so the so the episodes for the first season are ten minutes. You're saying? Yeah, they're all um, ten minutes or like eight to ten minutes. And you want to bump it up for the second season to twenty-two minute, half hour thing? Is that what you're saying? Or um, well, I think what we're trying to develop in this um, program is not necessarily making a full-fledged second season of Craft Ladies, but doing like like writing that twenty-two minute pilot that's kind of combining what we did with the web series and also like what would it be if it was on like FX or uh, HBO or something like that. Um, right. Yeah, so almost like something like a short or I don't know, we're just struggling with the development of an idea that we already have and then how to make it into something that's 22 minutes long with characters that are compelling in a storyline that's um, something people want to come back and watch every week. Right. Um, and and how, did, how did the first season go for you? Um, the first season was good. Um, the first episode got a lot of views, um, and then as it went on, it kind of got smaller and smaller. Um, so I think we just, because that was our first, you know, shot at it together. So that's why this program is great because we can have like the guidance and experts to talk to about like how did you expand and get like that fan base like how did you get people to come back every week and uh, just watch what you had. Right. Well, I think um, you know it's interesting. Uh, there's a, a web series called East Willie B mm -hmm. that um, my friend Julia Grob uh, did, and she did. I think it was. Three or three or five episodes for their first season. Yeah. And now they're doing a second season. They're just launching it. And um, you know, she was you know trying to figure out what the best way. I think the episodes are a little longer this time as well. And, oh. Uh, but she ended up having the first season. She was able to kind of put together a promo for a second season, raise the money on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and, you know, built up a little bit more of a fan base that way, actually. So then now that they're launching it, there's a bigger fan base. And she was definitely, you know, going, do I go and try to, you know, make a deal, you know, to try to sell us as a TV show? Do we try to do it this way? Yeah. Um, and, and she's still, you know, it's still trying to figure out what is the best way to go. I mean, do you try to do it as a as a 22 minute pilot that, that you can try to pitch around town as a TV series. Yeah. But it's also, you know, 22 minutes could also work on a on a Yahoo or a Hulu, you know. Um, there's other places that are looking for some longer format, you know, okay. kind of yeah. kind of shows. Um, so that might be, you know, potentially trying to set up meetings you know, getting, like you said, this little promo of the first season that you can cut together and, you know, see if you can, you know, meet with somebody at, at Yahoo or AOL and see if there's, if there's interested, are they trying to find, you know, other, you know, kind of female driven uh, projects, you know, and then that's a potential way of getting it made that way as well. Okay. But there's no, like, you know, again, it's kind of like, um, Trying to trying to uh, figure out what somebody else wants is you're going to be screwed. You know what I mean? You kind of have yeah. to figure out like what what kind of stories do you want to tell? Does a 22 minute format does that work for you? Is that best for this show? Yeah. You know, um, and then you know, based on the first season, you could potentially raise the money on Kickstarter or you know, Indiegogo or something to you know figure out a way to tell a 22 minute story. And then you could use that, you know, as a tool to potentially going to brands or going to, you know, like I said, a Yahoo or a Pop Sugar or something like that, where you know there's other other uh, uh, brands coming to the table, but they need original content, you mm -hmm. know, and they need original stories. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Great. Thank how about you, you Farron? Where are you right now in the development um, things? I'm just kind of following along with the syllabus. Um, so I finished the storyline pretty much of the first four episodes that I want to shoot. And well, like, um, I guess I watched one of your video and uh, the format of the web is, you know, between five and seven minutes. So um, I want to break, you know, like into 
So each episode will be five to seven minutes. So if I want to make it a pilot, I can just combine them together. Um, would that be something that that's reasonable, right? No. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And I would I would definitely recommend uh, in the writing of it that you know if it's uh, you know the, the seven let's say seven minutes right. um, that you've got kind of seven minutes as a first act. And then the next seven minutes is your second act. Right. You know, each kind of have a cliffhanger to a certain degree. And then the third, the third seven-minute episode giving you basically 21, 22-minute episode, then you could basically put them together. And it all, it, it comes as, it's an arc for all, th you know, each one kind of has a, a cliffhanger, yet it right. is like a 22-minute, you know, episode that has an arc so that you could then, you know, distribute it that way. Right. Um, but so in the writing of it, thinking how you can, you know, do it so that it's kind of a three-act structure for each episode, you know, kind of a beginning, middle, and end, and then same thing for like four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine kind of thing. Right. So, yeah, so I, 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 I am in the process of writing that, but uh, also I just met my, um, my producing partner earlier this morning, actually, and, um, you know, so we just have to, so I, um, so we're, I guess we're scouting for locations right now. There's only three locations, but, um, but because one of the, um, I, I, I kind of mentioned that earlier when we met at Pie Hole is that one in the first, the third episode, which is the, the, the third episode, like these guys, they're trying to open their, their background agency, but nobody hired them. So, you know, and then so they, they call one of their old friend who is a porn director. So they, you know, so it's going to be, so they, <laughs> so the porn director is like, okay, we need extra for this porn shoot and it's supposed supposed to be like a public porn shoot, right? And so, yeah, so all of that is going to be um, at a set and, um, and you know, like, so it's just location right now. So if anyone know, like, a rundown, I mean, restaurant or Chinese restaurant, let me know because that's what I'm looking for. And um, technical-wise, I'm actually, you know, trying to get crew for free as well because, you know, being Asian, I'm cheap. And um, <laughs> oh no, uh, I I mean you know right now is you know like looking for crew and I'm not really good with technical aspect. I, oh yeah, sorry I didn't mention that. So the show is kind of like the the it's it's gonna be like Reno 911 meets you know Parks and Rec, which is very campy and uh, like mockumentary style. Um, so there's going to be a lot of wide shot, and I'm planning to have most of it. So just you know, script the first and the the last bits of it, and then the middle just improvise. But I don't. I've never edited something like that, or I've never shot something like that. So you know, I don't really know how like camera set up. So that's that's what I'm looking for. Like you know, a DP that you know knows how to shoot kind of mock like documentary style. Uh -huh. So if any of you can you know. Um, I mean, if you have any, you know, comments or anything. Well, that actually brings me to a, uh, a question, Mark. Is that for 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 these guys that have a you know smaller scope of projects for the most part, where should they be um, pushing their resources to? What's the most important thing? Is it producer versus cinematographer, or is it based on the project itself? I mean, I think it's based on the project itself, um, but you know. Uh, where where does everybody live basically? I mean, where is everybody's? Where are they? Where are you guys located? Funny enough, we're, uh, we 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 asked the same question when we met, all met for the first time, trying to see if we can pair everybody up, and literally we we cover every other aspect. We we're like in every single part of Los Angeles. Not one mm -hmm. person is close to the other person. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, here in LA, I mean, there's just. You, you can't, I mean, everybody has, you know, a 5D or 7D camera. <laughs> you know, people are shooting stuff all the time, um, and they're doing stuff, you know, from like you're, you're trying to do in that kind of docu kind of, you know, drama yeah. style. Um, so, you know, you said you have a producing partner right yeah. now. Yeah, I, I actually call up a friend of mine, pretty much, you know, some someone, yeah, so I, I, I did. Well, I, I didn't, and then I did. So yeah, so plus I have and, one. Uh, and do they have they done this before? Have they shot some stuff before? Uh yeah, like you know they they shoot short and stuff like that. But you know documentary is kind of you know is um no. So I guess that would be my answer. No, they've never shot kind of like documentary mockumentary style before. 
Right. Like they should just, you know, like just camera set up like really because I want to make it very free and kind of almost like it's not too glamorous. Like it doesn't have to be like, oh yeah, that's the shoot. I had, that's the shot. It has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right. right. Well, I mean, that's the point of it, you know, so. Um, well, there's definitely, you know, uh, places on Facebook that have, there's, uh, you know, groups that are, you know, LA filmmakers and LA crew and people can post, you know, you know, projects and, you know, looking for a DP, looking for a director and things like that. And same thing with, you know, like mandy.com, uh, yeah. you can, you know, put up a, you know, something. And so that'd be a great way to like, you know, start getting it out there that you're looking for, you know, a DP that can shoot this kind of thing. There's no pay, you know, but it's, you know, credit and meal and, you know, I mean, everybody, like I've done it, I've done, I've probably done over a hundred projects for free, you know, as from yeah. shooting something to being PA to props to doing the boom or whatever, you know. Um, so, yeah, so not really, like, struggle. It's just, you know, the matter of putting the pieces together. Um, so, yeah, but I, I'm i actually scouting for people right now, so. Oh, great. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's I guess it's working out. Great. Um, so Drea's, Drea wrote here, Mark, that um, she's actually shot – the, the entire uh, entire piece and she's in the editing process of it right now and she's trying to research the business part um, to be ready when it's done for before release on YouTube I don't know if you have any advice for her I know it's a little vague I don't know if you want to clarify that Drea but um, what in particular area of the business are you are you um, struggling with right now sorry Mark she's typing yeah yeah But what is, I mean, just generally speaking, Mark, what, what kind of prep, prep work needs to be done on the business side or the social side? How much work should be done prior to ever launching this, uh, the series on, on YouTube? Um, in terms of the business side, what exactly um, do you mean? What specifically? Are you, do, do you think she means or what are you asking about? Uh, she hasn't written anything yet. But for, so as far as like um, getting an audience, how much work should be done before? For reaching the audience before launching your your uh, your series, I mean, I, I think as much as you can. I think that um, you know, finding out what shows are similar to your shows that are out there, uh, looking and 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 um, finding finding out uh, what's working for those shows. Let's say you're you're doing a show that's like um, Bernie Sue's uh, Lizzie Bennet Diaries, and so you can check that out and see, you know, oh, okay, so I'm looking at these comments, I'm seeing the other people, the other shows that these people are subscribing to, you know, um, can I, can I, can I find them, you know, on Twitter, can I let them know that, hey, I'm doing a, sh a show that's similar, you might like my show, you know, I'm gearing up to do it in a certain, you know, in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks kind of thing, um, finding other, uh, uh, blogs or somebody that's, that's already, um, you know, doing articles on the same kind of show. If it's like Squaresville, then you may, you know, search Google search Squaresville, see who's doing, you know, uh, articles on them, reach out to those blogs to, you know, a two filter type of thing and say, Hey, this is what we're doing. You know, we're gearing up to go in two weeks. I can, I can leak out a little, you know, our trailer to you if you want to check it out. Um, so I, I think you can, you can't like any like even in production you know the more preparation that you do the better off you're going to be so you know the preparation for the launch is who's going to be my audience how do I how do I reach them the easiest way is always looking at you know what shows are like the show that you're making and kind of trying to, and reaching out to those people you know is somebody you know who's commenting on a squares well who's commenting on a geek and sundry show from Felicia Day who's 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 doing something on, you know, health and fitness and, you know, and hashtagging that and saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing, a, a, you know, a project or just kind of tagging, you know, kind of following them, you know, on Twitter or, you know, uh, liking them on Facebook and just kind of keeping a, tr uh, a tab of things. I mean, I'm always, I have like an Excel sheet on for every different thing. So I have like crew people, I have an Excel and I write people down that I've worked with before, contacts and people I've worked with before. So I'm constantly building those things and lists yeah. of things I have like, you know, on my laptop I have, you know, stickies and I'm constantly writing down shows that I like and 
people that are doing the things that I like or articles and I'm, you know, tagging that kind of stuff and, you know, kind of tweeting or Facebooking an article about something that's similar to a project I'm doing. So it kind of just builds that momentum. And as people comment or as people see it, then I can, you know, I can say, oh, this is somebody that likes what I'm talking about. You know, this is the kind of show that they like as well. Great. Great. It's kind of, it, it's, it, I'm, feels general what I just said, but I mean, you know, finding the specifics to your project. That makes sense. It does make perfect sense. Um, Marco, what, uh, you, you've got your, um, your pilot written out already, right? Don't, don't forget to unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have a pilot written, but, uh, you know, I'm kind of, like, I mean, I was, you've read it, um, and there's some aspects I wanted to tweak on the actual pilot um, that I haven't really done yet, because I'm not sure if I should. Maybe I should just kind of focus on what I have now, not try and maybe, uh, I don't know, because, I mean, now, after what, reading, watching your uh, course, like the first chapter, like, the more I started hearing how you said you can have three types of time, like, you know, the more I was kind of geared towards making it kind of like a feature film or just longer episodes in general and having a little bit more intricate storyline, a little bit, and also trying to include the structure that I wanted, that I talked to you about, uh, Sarah, where we would have a case, because I don't think I was able to even include one, like, per, you know, initially, very little and, like, peripherally in, like, the end of the episode, I kind of mention it, but doesn't really delve into what actually, what happens. I was going to do that in the second episode, maybe a little bit more. Um, but, I mean, if I could expand the length, I'm, I totally forgot what the question was. What were we talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the pilot, the pilot. Um, so, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, like, a little bit unsure of where I want to go forward with my, with my story, uh, mainly because... I kind of have an idea of what I wanted the season arc uh, for the first season to be. Um, I haven't written it down, but I have, um, you know, thought about it for a good amount of time. And I've um, the biggest thing is now, do I want to just kind of expand each episode? And I don't know what you would recommend uh, with that. I mean, is it better to keep it, I mean, sweet and small, especially if it's something that is not necessarily, I guess. I guess there's no, I haven't really, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this, I guess, you know, this being my first initial, I guess, web series that I wrote and most likely will direct, um, and I mean, I, I don't know, would pe is it more, I guess, advantageous to distribute it, like, get more recognition, like, what, like you did with Sony, um, if it's sweet and short, then it being longer. I don't know. Well, Sorry, what, I'm what's your rambling. no, no, it's okay. What's what's your plan? Are you are you planning on on shooting just the pilot? Uh, or are you what what what's your kind of what, uh, right now? I mean, not that you have to have your plan figured out now, but I'm just asking, kind of in your mind, what you're thinking of doing over the next ten weeks or whatever. Ideally, I mean, I would uh, for sure the pilot. Um, anything, and if I can do more, yes, because I I, I mean, if I'm going to be able to shoot. I'm going to try and shoot. I want to shoot as much as possible, especially if there's going to be similar locations, uh, similar characters, and if I can just, you know, get their scenes out, you know, and then come back and do it, I'd, you know, just for continuity's sake, uh, I would ideally want to write out as, I mean, I would want to write all, all 10 or 12 episodes if possible. Um, that's also where it's like time frame wise, if I do decide to make them longer, um, well, I guess it doesn't matter because if they're going to be 22 episodes, you know, 22 pages long, then I guess I won't have to have as many episodes like you mentioned. Right. So um, ideally, I mean, if I can do the whole season, awesome. You know, that's what I want to do. I want to have everything done because I right. that for me, I need structure to get things done. Right. And that's why I decided to do this because I wanted to just take action, like you said. Right. So, so I mean, uh, you know. In terms of the length and what the with the pilot, you know, it really depends on, you know, kind of what you want to do first. Like if you say, you know, I want to do a pilot first, and then I'm going to try to raise some money with the pilot on Kickstarter or, you know, with with other people or you know, whatever I'm going to do to raise the money for that, you know, to to shoot the whole series. Um, then I would say, you know, with that pilot is to you know try to fill it in with as many nuances and characters and story points that you want in a way that'll 
you know, give a better idea of what the show is. When we did the Band Away, we shot two five-minute episodes because we had a, a uh, basically, you know, kind of the, the band and rule, you know, and so it was kind of like, the, you know, these things to live by. And so the first episode, you know, I uh, didn't obey the rule, and the second I did. And so we wanted to show both elements so that somebody could watch and go, oh, okay, so one episode, he transgresses it. Second episode, he obeys it, and he gets what he's trying to go for. So it was important for us to shoot both for that thing. You may see that in the same thing, your pilot in the second episode, if they can tie in together. you know. And again, if you're doing something like a 22, ultimately you could do 11-11, you know, and then you have that. But the first episode could still be you know, enough that that could be what you want to make. Um, I guess it really depends on, you know, the story. Again, if it's, if it feels like it could be bigger into a 22 minute episode thing and you want to split it up into two 11s or, you know, three sevens or something like that, you know, that ultimately you have that thing. Um, shorter, sweeter is always easier to shoot and build that confidence and not overwhelm yourself on the first one to feel like, oh my God, I got to do, see 22, Mark is saying that's, is that four or five episodes? That's, that's like 15 episodes <laughs> to shoot. And then I'm like, Week three, I'm gone. You know what I mean? And I just like work comes up, uh, you know, I get injured, I can't, you know, my hands tweaked, I can't write, whatever. You know what I mean? So I say, you know, bite off, you know, what you can chew and do something that's like, how can you do it successfully and do it smaller? We didn't go and try to shoot the whole 90 minute. We shot two five little five minute pieces that we knew we could kind of control mm -hmm. and, and stick with that. Um, but there's something else that you were saying about the uh, writing uh, oh about rewriting and should you rewrite it or not I mean you can you can always be rewriting matter of fact you'll always be rewriting as you go through the whole process so you know if you have something that you like and you kind of move forward as you're kind of putting pieces together you may go oh you know what I actually want to put that other character and let me do another draft of this you know but don't don't get stuck on making that perfect because you'll never get it perfect and um, there's enough people at Starbucks or Salar on Coenga that are trying to make their script perfect and not making anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I would just, you know, find something in a, in a, in a way that in something in a, in a, in a, uh, format and a length that you go, I can actually do this. I can actually shoot, you know, three minute pieces. I'll do three of them or I'll do one first or I'll do a five minute, you know, whatever it is, it's going to build, you know, the confidence to do it. Cause the, the worst thing is to get overwhelmed and feel like, it's this huge thing that I'm trying to do. It's like, you know, just shooting something is much more important than not shooting anything because you don't have the money to shoot the whole pile that's in your head. Just, you know, whatever you can. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Um, and I, I guess one question was about, maybe I missed it when I was saying bye to my uh, colleagues over here, but um, just, uh, I know you are mentioning about find your audience, your target audience, and find shows that are similar to what you are trying to make and how do you go about doing that? I mean, do you just Google like words and or do you have like a certain ways? I mean, I just grabbed everyone's postcard from this table just to check them out because I figured maybe one of them will be similar. I mean, I guess I can kind of get an idea from the title of the shows, but I mean, how do you, how would you go about finding particular ones? I mean, especially, well, I mean, I guess, that, sorry, go ahead. Well, there's, there's several places, you know, um, first of all, I, I would go to, the, 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 the web series that are getting a lot of press and are getting awards, like at the Streamy Awards or the IEW TV Awards. So I would look both of those places up see, make, and see all the, and all of them are linked right to the show. So you can go check out, if it's a comedy, you can look at your comedies. Um, the web series, uh, what is it? Um, uh, there's a... Uh, it's not maybe it's a web series network, but it's another. There's a there's a couple web series. There's a couple sites that actually distribute web series like Blip TV. So I would go check them out. Kind of put in keywords of comedy or you know whatever your genre is, and see the shows and see what they're doing. Then you can kind of take that name of the show, Google it, see if, the, if there's getting if they're getting press. Is there a blog covering it? Check out that blog reach out to the, you know, one of the editors or somebody that's writing an article to them and say, you know, hey, this is what I'm, you know, working on next. This is what I'm developing, you know, or whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you, I would go for, I always like going for like, you know, what's getting, what's working out there. 
Like, what are the shows that people are watching, getting press, have a lot of subscribers on YouTube, they've got a lot of fans that are talking, and then see what they're doing. Like, look, Googling them and seeing what kind of articles they're, they're generating or, you know, what kind of events they're doing or, you know, are they doing a Google Hangout on a launch? Are they doing an event with a live screening, you know? So those are all elements that you can do to find out, you know, what – those are the good – the successful shows. But then looking at – What's working for that? How long is it, are those shows? Okay, they're seven minutes. Oh, and they have like three characters. Okay, this one's three minutes, but it's only two characters, you know, or whatever it is. So, you know, more research you can do on finding the cool things like the IEW TV, the Streamy Awards, Webbies, um, you know, the, the channels like Blip and, um, and, uh, and I think it's the, I want to say the Web Series Network, but now I, I don't think that's what it is. But it, it's another, you know, um, He's going to kill me, too. And, I, and now I'm spacing on his name. I'll think of it. I'll think of it. Right. And so for uh, let's take the next few minutes just uh, for the sake of uh, what we were trying to accomplish in week one. Let's go around, and uh, if you guys can quickly tell me and Mark what your goals are, what are you trying to ch achieve with, uh, with your uh, specific projects. Can we start with you again, Farron? It's just uh, unlike you for you, Farron. You're on the far, farthest left corner of my screen, so... <laughs> Oh, not because I'm special. What is your goal? You are special. You are special. Um, what's the goal? Huh? Um, my goal is just, you know, to uh, help, hopefully to develop a, a, a web series, okay. like a series, and um, if it's good, then, you know, pitch it. I don't, you know, I... Good yeah. enough for me. Megan? Megan is talking to her sister about this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys come to a, a uh, we agreement didn't even, about what you want to say about your goals? Well, we didn't really. I guess, I mean, I guess our overall goal was just to just create some sort of tangible work that we've both worked on, um, yeah, and have it online so we can either, like, transition into, like, other jobs or just have something to show of, like, this is something, you know, my sister produced and I wrote, you know, so that was basically our goal, um, and we would like it to be successful, I guess. Absolutely. How about you, Marco? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, I'm, I have my earphones. Um, I guess the biggest, you know, I was. Uh, what's the? Um, you know, I guess what my biggest issue is just trying to. Um, I mean, we're talking about the development right now, I guess, right, of what, what's going on. What your goal is with, for... Uh, oh, wait. What, what your goal I hear is... You. <laughs> what was that? What, what is your goal for your project? Oh, sorry. I have both. It's hard to talk without my headphones on, but I'm in a public place. But um, anyways, um, so my goal, I guess, <laughs> is to uh, finish the, um, you know, finish the web series and actually at least create a pilot by the end. I mean... I want to film it. I want to do it, but I mean, um, and I mean, distribution and all that. That's really something I would worry about. But I really just want to have something done by the end of this uh, ten weeks. I mean, just to worry. And then even if I can't focus on distributing it now, maybe just worry about just just having it complete. I mean, just to have it ready to be post production. Just have it filmed. You know, definitely. That's I guess my end result. Sorry about that. Great. How about you, Matt? What is a what is a goal for your uh, your project? Um, I kind of have like a threefold goal for this particular project. Number one, I'm trying to build a following because I'd like to bring this or some adaptation of it to network. But I want to establish a a following um, now so that I can have a little more control as opposed to just pitching it and then um, losing control as a producer. Um, and then I'm also trying to just establish more street cred for myself as a producer. And I'm also using this particular project because I want to be the on-camera host. So um, rather than trying to build up a reel by auditioning for a whole bunch of stuff, I'm just um, casting myself as the host. Mm -hmm. So I'm using that. I have um, kind of selfish motives also uh, for the show because I'm just putting myself uh, on camera while I'm also producing. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about you, Tiff? Um, so, I mean, kind of like what I said before is we want to, I mean, it, I liked what Mark said about 
if you want to do a 22 minute, then maybe you choose to do three seven minutes or two 11. So that's definitely something that I think will help us in developing the idea for a craft ladies sitcom. Um, so I think we want to elaborate more on that and see what sort of storyline and idea we can do under that guise of um, format. So that's definitely uh, a great idea. Thank you, Mark. Um, but so, and then essentially having those two 11 minutes, we would want to use that to pitch a solid idea of a show. Great. So now before I open it up to questions from uh, the viewers watching the streaming version of this, do you guys inside the room have any last questions for Mark? Okay. I think I'm, I'm sorry, Mark, did you have a question from No, I just wanted to say no. How does that work? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Let me open it up to questions here real quick, Mark. So this question is from Jennifer H. She says that she has no behind the camera experience and doesn't know where to start um, in creating her web series. She should just not do it at all. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I think, uh, like I said, you know, doing some research online of successful web series that are out there and reaching out to those filmmakers and you know, let and telling them that you're that you're starting a show, that you're not, you'd love to take them for coffee and kind of find out what they did and how they did it. Uh, reaching out to, going to networking events for, um, uh, for other web series, you know, searching for uh, those kind of things. Um, like Tube Filter has events. Um, their Digital LA has events. So, you know, getting in, the, in, the, in a room with other people that are creating web series and and finding out how they did it how they got their crew you know I think that's the that's the big way of doing it great and um, some of the I mean some of the things that everyone has to remember is that uh, most film students start you know have, you know they have the same um, challenges that you guys have in finding crew members and getting actors for the first time and we, there's, you know, there's tons of people like yourselves out there that require the same resources. So it's just a matter of finding everybody <laughs> like yourself and just reaching out. And also, one main important thing is you have to help other people. Yeah. You have to call, so you can call in favors. That's one thing to remember too. Yeah, exactly. The more you help other people on other projects, then you can ask a favor. I mean, pretty much everybody that I've worked with on when we did Bannon the first time, I had either worked on a project of theirs or we had met on a project that we were both working for free or we were working on something that we were both paid and they knew that I was doing this and we were willing to kind of you know work it out that way um, there's a lot of a lot of great um, resources um, out there like we make movies is a great organization that you know is a bunch of filmmakers you know making web series making short films they have you know there are people that they have their lists are as directors that are DPs that are editors and so you can go in there and they've got insurance and they can get help you with all those kind of resources that you need so finding communities like that finding communities of other other web series creators there's like an LA web series uh, uh, group on uh, on Facebook same thing with you know New York and and um, you know, there's and joining like an IAW TV where there's other people that are making. That's the most thing, that's the most beneficial thing. Great. Uh, the question. This next question is from Sylvia Franklin. She wants to know what is your pre-production process? Um, do you have a marketing and distribution already? Has has the marketing and distribution already been decided for the web series before you ever begin production? I mean, I think that ideally, in an ideal situation, that you, you know, if you're raising a certain amount of money to create a web series, that you do factor in money for um, press, marketing, and those are things like posters and website design and, you know, potentially, you know, some Google, some uh, uh, Facebook ads, um, you know, uh, creating some kind of campaign for yourself. So, yeah, hiring somebody uh, like Brian Rada, you know, to, to help your web series costs money. And so if you can budget that in early on, that is not, you know, because a lot of times people will budget money 
to shoot it, and then they don't have the money to edit it and do you know sound and color and music. So now people are getting, oh shoot, I have to like put all that together. You know, I got to get the post production too. But then they forget that there there's going to be some money to you know build an audience to you know get a Twitter account and website going and and helping with social media and having somebody that can help with that costs a little money. So yeah, figuring all those things out. And I you know I'm definitely the guy that thinks backwards, you know, in terms of every project. So before I'm even, you know, we're, you know, before we even shot anything, we're already thinking, where is this going to go? What elements are we going to need? Who can we bring on board now that can be a part of it in terms of, you know, uh, website design, poster design? What kind of trade can I do for them? You know, am I good at one thing? Can I say, I will do this for you on your project? Would you be willing to do something like this? Uh, you know, even like still photography, you know, maybe there's somebody that, you know, you do websites and a still photographer needs some website help. So you can say, come to my set, shoot photos of our, you know, of the actors and behind the scenes stuff. And I'll help you with that, you know, with that thing. So, you know, always looking at what elements can I use at the end, some behind the scenes footage that I can sneak out to people, you know, a blog and say, here's a little behind the scenes of the, of the shoot with a little promo. Here's some photos. Um, here's a poster, you know, here's, you know, um, you know, uh, a special promo that we've cut just for, you know, two filter or pop sugar or, you know, whatever it is. Gotcha. One last question before we wrap up. Uh, this is from Nicholas Simon. I have a high production value web series I'm launching on Wednesday. It is based in the 1950s and features housewives with superpowers. We were able to complete six episodes how is it best to uh, get it out there, and how can we best find the funds to create season two or the rest of season one? Um, let's see. I guess, you know, can he respond? Or, or <laughs> Unfortunately, no. no. Okay, so, you know, it really depends on where you're launching it. Are you launching it on your own YouTube channel? Are you launching it on Blip TV? Are you launching it um, through your own site? Uh, you know, the best thing is to, you know, find a way to get that out to as many people as possible. Um, and like I said earlier with the, the research with, you know, kind of a high production value, kind of 50s housewives of superpowers, you know, it's like looking up those web series that are, that have a similar kind of theme to it, um, you know, or, you know, who the audience is and seeing if you can see who's doing coverage on those, you know, on those things. Is it, does it have a kind of a video game vibe to it or something? Then maybe you can go to some of the video game sites kind of and it. tell them, you know, link to them, talk to, you know, don't just, don't just post on their site, you know, on a comment of something like, Hey, check out my web series, but actually reach out to, you know, somebody that's actually writing articles for those, for those blogs and tell them, Hey, this is what I'm to check it out. And here's some, marketing material, here's kind of a breakdown of who the actors and the, and the cast is and the director and this is how we shot it and things like that. So um, I would definitely, you know, be, be focusing on who, you know, who else is doing these kind of shows yeah. and how can I get in there? How can I, how can I, you know, get the same, you know, people watching that show as they're watching mine? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, before we wrap up, any last questions for Mark? Great. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for all your time today. We're no grateful. Um, and we'll keep on go going, guys. Nine more weeks, and uh, I'll check in with each, each of you individually later today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dre, why don't you stay in the room with me so I can figure out your technical problems? Thanks. Thank Good you, luck, Mark. everybody. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Bye, guys. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye.